Amen. Before we begin our Thanksgiving celebration, there are a couple announcements that it's good for us to be aware of. So first, Wilf and Elsie Thompson. Elsie has now been relocated to Stetler. So she's no longer here in Camrose. Uh, she's at one of the homes in Stetler, just to be aware of that. And Wilf will be relocating to her on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. So if you, if you haven't seen Will or visited with him, he's in the hospital at St. Mary's, but he will be relocating to Stetler. And uh, I think the understanding is they hope, right now they hope that some, you know, placement may be, happen in cameras, but right now they're in Stetler. So we'll remember them in prayer. Second, um, Robert was mentioning t to me this morning that in the town, the village of Bashaw last night, the ho hotel, the motel burnt to the ground. So, you know, I'm sure Tom, you know, as a, uh, in Ottawa's former firefighters, would cameras have gone to Bashaw? Okay, so we remember uh, the whole town is probably like, wow, you know. Um, finally, Daryl. And Dale, you know, Dale's not here at the present moment. They are going to celebrate confirmation. They've taken six classes of two hours each for a total of 12 hours. So in advance, would you give thanks to the Lord for Dale and Daryl? And they will receive this morning their own catechism and also a certificate saying that they are now confirmed members in the Christian faith. Um, and for those of us who can remember our confirmation days, we can say amen to that, okay? Amen. <laughs> the order of service that we are using is going to be noted there on, on the projector. We'll have a moment of silence and then we will together join in the confession of sin. Vini Sancte Spiritus, Amen. Congregation, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Is it okay, Lori? Dave, may I continue or? Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in singing our opening hymn, O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing, verses 1 to 4. <laughs> to sing my great Redeemer's praise.
gracious master and my God. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrow cease. He breaks the power of canceled sin. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Together, let us join in the prayer for Thanksgiving Day. Together, Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings and the sermon. The first reading, the Old Testament reading, is from Ruth chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. My mic is off, Dave. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judea went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Ophrah. Now remember, not Oprah, but Ophrah. And the name of the other was Ruth. They lived there about 10 years, and both Malon and Chilion died so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughter-in-laws to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and had given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go! Return each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and they wept. And Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, 
I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. And may the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything, but death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she, Ruth, was determined to go with her, she said, no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman said, is this Naomi? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, the psalm appointed for this Sunday is Psalm 111, and we recite it together. The second reading for Thanksgiving Day is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Gospel for this Sunday, Thanksgiving Sunday, is taken from St. Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master! Have pity on us. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. 
Now one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And this one, he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Jesus asks, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to the God except this foreigner? And the Thanksgiving sermon is titled, Today Jesus Welcomes Me, the Sinner. Let's pray. Help us this morning, Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake to know how great Jesus' love and mercy is for me, the sinner. For without you, Lord Jesus, we but suffer. We are estranged from the Father in heaven, and no one will welcome us. But with you, Jesus, you open your arms, you welcome us into the Father's presence and into a community because of you, that knows that we are loved, that makes us know we're loved. For I ask this in your name, amen. Today's Thanksgiving, and it's one of those Sundays where um, we will gather and we'll give thanks and we remember the food that we're going to eat, the families that are going to come, and the friends and so forth. It's, it's one of those days where I'm not really quite sure how this text connects to Thanksgiving. I know in the end it says, and he returned and gave thanks to Jesus. But the person who returned experiences an event in his life that is so different than ours. And I had to really wrestle with this, this text. And I hope that this morning you will see three things or three common things that we share with the ten lepers, but especially the one who returns, and I hope that it makes us have a greater appreciation for being thankful today and each day. So first, the 10 people who are called lepers knew that they were lepers. I mean, it sounds kind of obvious, right? That they knew that in society, they could not come amongst the people, could not mingle, they couldn't come and just sit amongst us. Got it? If you had or when you had the disease of leprosy, you had to be at a distance, you could not mingle, and you had to cry out wherever you went the moment you saw a person, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, don't come near me. And society or the people would shun them, avoid them. In fact, they set aside places where only lepers could live. It was called a leper colony, you know? And the society brought food for them, placed it on a tray. The lepers came, took the food, and ate it. How many remember the movie Ben-Hur with Charles Heston? Remember? Remember where his mom and his his, his sister got leprosy, and, and you know what was amazing is that Ben-Hur went into the leper area, and of course they were healed at the very end. It, it's like that. I was reading in a commentary about leprosy. The lepers are afflicted with a contagious plague, and they were not permitted to mingle with the inhabitants of towns and villages. But they had to live in lonely places where they had no contact with anyone except other lepers. Food was dropped off in designated places, and the leprosy pr produces ulcerations and deformities on the body. You can see it. The mucous membranes of the mouth and larynx are affected, and even the disease can have their ears 
and their nose and their lips eaten away, or their hands eaten away. Are you catching me when I say this is what these ten men had? They were lepers. And it's hard for us to understand this because we don't suffer from that kind of disease. And then on top of that, on top of this disease, one of them was a Samaritan. I mean, it was bad enough to be a leper, but if you were also a Samaritan, when you came into Jewish contact, Jewish people and Samaritans didn't have contact with each other at all. There was no social grace. There was no welcome. So here we have 10 people who literally experience isolation and estrangement. You know, they have no hope of being reconciled. There's no cure for them amongst people known at this time. They were literally abandoned and they were left to die as a leper. You got that? Where I'm going with this or where I want to highlight or what scripture wants to highlight for us today is that people without Jesus are called lepers. Our sin sickness makes us not right with God. Our sin sickness before the Holy One, the Creator, is like a leprosy in his heart and eyes. We are but rebellious, stubborn, at odds with evil people. This is what it means to be who we are by nature without Christ in our life. And we have no cure, no hope of ever being reconciled to the Father in and of ourself. And we are totally left to our own and we will die in our sin without Jesus Christ. We are lepers before God without Christ. Does that make sense to you? I mean, one of the joys this morning is that, and, we're gonna, and I'm going to point this out, is when we came into the presence of the Father, the first thing that we did is we admitted that we are lepers. We are sinners. And I mean, one of the things that I have been always perplexed by is how difficult it is for a person to say that I am a sinner, that I really am as bad as the Bible says I am, that I am by nature without Christ, someone who in the presence of God is someone who cannot be welcomed. That's really difficult. People have a hard time confessing that. People have a hard time saying that. You know? So the first point in Thanksgiving Day as we come here is, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. I come to you and I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Chiefest of sinners, though I be, you know, just as I am, I come to thee. Second, Jesus looks at the ten lepers. Jesus sees them for who they are. They are lepers. And Jesus welcomes them and speaks to them a healing word. He doesn't touch them. He doesn't say to people, oh, don't worry, folks, these aren't as bad as they are. Jesus looks at them and sees them, not for what they hope to become, but for who they are. Men, not right, broken and diseased. And he says, welcome, now go and show yourself to the priests. He speaks a word of grace to them. 
Again, I want to highlight for us today that we are welcomed as lepers, as sinners before the Father because Jesus speaks a word of grace to you. Just speak thy word, O Lord, and I will be healed. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the word, declare, announce to all of you this morning that for the sake of Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven you. You, the sinner, now for Jesus' sake, has been healed, has been forgiven. You know, it just doesn't end, you know, a couple minutes ago. Again, looking ahead, when you come here to Holy Communion and the word Jesus says in the night in which he was betrayed, you know, when this word is connected to the elements of bread and wine, when you come here and you extend your hand and you receive the elements of bread and wine, your faith is saying that I trust that Jesus Christ is truly present in, with, and under the elements of these bread and wine. And when I take it inside of me, according to his word, I receive the forgiveness of all my sins. Simple as that. That's why Holy Communion is such a central part to Christian worship and why it's so important for us here at Grace Community to have it weekly, if not more. We want to know that for Jesus' sake, God is always merciful to me, the sinner, when I receive him. This is what your faith affirms. This is what your faith in Jesus believes. According to his word, Jesus, I know today that I am healed. That's the second thing. First is that I am the sinner. Second, Jesus, according to his word, welcomes me, the sinner, and forgives me. And finally, on this Thanksgiving Sunday, the third thing is, you notice the response of the ten lepers. Does anyone know why the other nine didn't come back? Any idea? Like, I don't have an idea. Anyone? Go ahead, Landy. Any idea? So th they're so excited and happy that they've been healed that nine of them forgot to come back. I, I'm not going to disagree. It's, I, I don't know why nine of them never came back. All ten were forgiven. Like all ten were healed. But why, why so many didn't come back to Jesus? Their mom and dad, yeah, <laughs> their mom and dad never taught them to say thank you. I mean, I agree with you, Josh. I mean, <laughs> how many here, that's a fundamental social grace. <laughs> Way to go, parents, you know? Like, I, I thought maybe I would say like five of the ten didn't come back or, you know, three of the ten. And that there would have been a greater return. You know, more people would have come back. You know, the text says that one of the ten... And even that one was someone who was, was a Samaritan and, and really shouldn't have come back to Jesus, but he did. I sense, this is just my feeling, when Jesus tells this true story, he's wanting to show how powerful his word and his forgiveness is in the lives of people. And for this one person, it literally changed his world. You know, I don't know why, I honestly don't know why more brothers and sisters in the Lord aren't moved by the grace of God. I don't have an answer for that. You know, 
We all receive this morning the same benefit of grace. It's not like one receives more than the other. But our responses are different. But it's my hope and prayer that all of us are inspired by this one person. He came back to Jesus, and it says he fell on his knees and he began to worship him. You know, to praise and thank Jesus. It reminds me of the hymn, Were the whole realm of nature mine, that would attribute far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. And again, when you look at Luther's small catechism and you take a look at, you know, the petitions, you take a look at the Apostles' Creed especially, you know, that we are to praise, thank, and serve him above all things. Our Christian understanding and experience within the Lutheran Church is really one where we learn to give thanks. Um, we learn to say to our Heavenly Father, thank you for being merciful to me. And as a response, now I will go and serve you, Jesus, wherever you send me. That's what we learned this Thanksgiving Day through the story, through the healing of the ten lepers. Again, number one, we are by nature sinful and unclean. And our nature without Jesus is a leprosy before the Father in heaven that keeps us at a distance. Number two, for Jesus' sake, he reaches out to the lepers who come and cry, Lord, have mercy. Jesus gives to us who cry out to him. He gives to us forgiveness and mercy. And again, you hear this in the words that are being spoken here, but clearly, clearly in Holy Communion, take and eat, take and drink. This is for you for the forgiveness of all your sins to be healed. And number three, your response, God be willing, the Holy Spirit leading, your response is like that one person who returns back to Jesus, and with your heart and your life, you give thanks, and you praise the Father in heaven for sending Jesus into your life, and now you go and serve him now and forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and give us that faith in Jesus this morning who welcomes me, the sinner, and then as a response of that faith to live a life for Jesus that's filled with joy and love and continues to serve him each and every day. And this is what thanksgiving is all about. Amen. Let's stand and sing the hymn of faith, Onward Christian Soldiers. Onward Christian Soldiers Marching as to war With the cross of Jesus Going on before Christ the royal master Jesus Forward into battle See his banners go Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. Going on before, like a mighty army, We are 
are not divided. Onward, Christian soldiers. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. Amen. Please be seated. Daryl, except for you, you are a soldier that needs to stand. And if you'll please come forward. And for those people who attended the Lutheranism 101 class, would you now please stand and come and stand behind Daryl. And uh, Dale is not with us this morning, but he also will uh, have received confirmation today. We can make like an, uh, come on, just swing over this way, okay? So Daryl Janssen and Dale Lyle, you have been instructed in the Christian faith, and this morning you desire to make a public affirmation of this faith, this faith that was given to you in baptism, and which has now been explained and taught to you during confirmation class. So we rejoice that you now desire to make this public profession and to assume greater responsibility in the life of Jesus' community, which is called the church, and his ministry here at Grace, a ministry of preaching and of teaching and of healing. Daryl, I remind you that in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of his community. In this community of God's people, you have learned from his word, his loving purpose for you, and of all creation. And you have been nourished at this holy table, and you have also been uh, anointed by the Spirit and called to be his witness in the world. So I'm going to ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. And uh, David, if you'd put the Nicene Creed on, Okay, thank you. It's already there. But before we begin that, Daryl Dar uh, and Dale, <laughs> I have a question. Do you renounce the devil, all his ways and all his empty promises? If so, answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, I renounce them. Together, let us make a common confession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Just up there. Together, I believe in one God. I believe in one God. 
Place your hand on Daryl's shoulder, okay? Daryl, if you just step forward just a little, okay? Good. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Daryl the gift of the Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, and give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. For Jesus' sake, amen. Please offer your prayers now for your brother. Amen. And continue, gracious Holy Spirit, to lead and guide Daryl each and every day to Jesus, who is his Lord and Savior, and who has brought his healing grace into his life so that he knows this day, for your sake, Jesus, that he is the forgiven sinner and he gives thanks. Amen. Daryl, on behalf of Grace Lutheran Church, I present to you a certificate of your confirmation and then also Luther's small catechism. Will you join me in giving thanks to the Lord? <laughs> just share the peace of the Lord with Daryl, okay? Peace of the Lord, Daryl, okay? Please remain seated. Gracious Father, we do return thanks to you today for your mercy and kindness to all that you have made seen and unseen. We thank you that you are merciful and kind to us and that because of that, we who are sinners today know your forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, continue Holy Spirit to lead and guide Grace Lutheran in its walk with Jesus and together moving us to be a community based on forgiveness that is joyful and thankful in serving you, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray your blessing to be upon Paul and Phyllis Forberg and their family. Lead and guide them each and every day. We pray for Bethel Lutheran Church here in Camrose. Our brothers and sisters, O oh Lord, we lead, ask you to lead and guide them carefully and, and uh, with love in, in their heart, love for Jesus. We pray for Pastor Mark Schultz and his family at Zion Lutheran in Rimby, especially now with Mark and his wife as they celebrate the upcoming marriage of their daughter. And we remember our brothers and sisters at Living Waters Lutheran Church in Dnipropetrovsk, Ukraine. Let your blessing, O oh Lord, rest upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We receive the offering, and the offering that we're going to sing offertory is give thanks. Ushers, please come forward. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ, his son, and now because of what? Gracious Father, we give you thanks for the gifts that you provide for us, leading God every day, Lord, to invest the earthly treasures wisely so that we may bring Jesus to this world. Amen. Please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also Jesus took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And together we pray thee, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. forever and ever. Amen. Uh, please remain standing. The communion assistant, Ken, Leanne, and Eric, if you'll also come forward at this time. Communion assistant, please come forward. We sing. <laughs> you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is given for you. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ which is shed for you in 
shed for all people for the forgiveness of all your sin. Amen. Take and drink the blood of Christ. And now may the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you and strengthen you into life everlasting. Know this day that for Jesus' sake, God forgives you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Depart in his peace, amen. Oh, Ken, Ken. <laughs> Remember that for Jesus' sake, you are God's son that you are God's daughter, that you are God's son. If you just put out your hands, come, Lord, through this holy hands, this holy anointing, bring your healing grace to us sin-sick sinners. Amen. Through these hands, Lord, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come to bring your healing grace to sin-sick sinners who come to you this day for healing. For I ask this all in your name. Amen. You go in the name of our Lord. It's his power. It's his ministry. Depart in his peace. Amen. John, there's no one.
Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. <coughs> sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, thou art, how great thou art. Great I wonder, in the trees, Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for parish announcements. Daryl and Robert, if you'll come forward. Good morning, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning, Daryl. The fall tea and bake sale is scheduled for Saturday, November 12th. The annual sauerkraut supper is October 22nd at 6 o'clock p.m. Tickets are $16 per plate, available from the office from LWMLC members. Don't miss it. Drop-in coffee and devotional Wednesdays at 10 o'clock a.m. 
Enjoy fellowship, study, and prayers. Thanksgiving caroling Wednesday, October 12th at Rose Haven. Meet here at Grace at 6 o'clock p.m. See Pat Ma for more information. Youth Group Service Project this Friday, October 12th, 7 o'clock p.m. Movie Night, Tuesday, The Current, 7 o'clock p.m., Tuesday in the Parish Hall. Christian Ethics begins October 20th, 7 o'clock p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Thursdays. Understanding what the Bible teaches about truth, reality, and human nature. Red Cross First Aid and CPR class this week, Thursday the 13th to Saturday the 15th at the Fire Hall. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and today is National Clergy Appreciation Day. Take a moment to tell Pastor Greg how much you appreciate him. And finally, have a ha happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. Robert? Good morning. Morning. If everyone will take a look at the back corner by the elevator, the defibrillator is now on the wall, set and ready to go. Hopefully we don't have to use it, but it's there. So I'd like to thank everybody that helped me make this possible. Also, Daryl announced the uh, first aid classes, so anyone that signed up, I won't be there on the Thursday night because I have other commitments, but please do not forget Thursday night, Friday night, and all day Saturday to complete your first aid studies, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Robert. Um, Tom. Uh, good morning. Morning. <clears throat> As it is Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say thanks for all the prayers that uh, I've gotten while I've been away at school. Two weeks to go, all my exams are done. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you very much for your prayers. I've got five-week practicum when that those la next two weeks are done. So hopefully to uh, be returning here soon. Uh, as it is, Pastor Appreciation Month, Pastor, if you on behalf of the congregation, we just have a little appreciation for you. Thanks. And remember to keep Pastor in your prayers while he's off to Ukraine and to Russia. Mm -hmm. and oh, not Russia. <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> no Russia. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and his family as well in his absence. So. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Chris is at home. She's getting turkey ready. And um, otherwise, she'll be here. Um, when I do go on holidays, I just want to uh, let you be aware that I've traveled back, back to the Ukraine. But I, my, I'm going to two parts, to the city of Odessa, where our Lutheran seminary is. And then second, I'm going to the northwest part again, where my grandparents lived. But especially, I'm making a trip to the German extermination camp, Auschwitz and Birkenau. So I ask that you remember me and in my travels as I go there and then come back. I should return, Lord willing, on November the 9th. Um, and in the stead on October 23rd, Elder Dave Goss is going to be preaching. It'll be an elder-led service, no communion. And then on the other two Sundays, Pastor Bob DeBold will be here, retired military chaplain, and they will have two services with Holy Communion, okay? Are there any other announcements for our life together? Then let's stand and sing the last three verses. Well, 4,000 tongues to sing. Look unto him, ye nations own.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks,